Hey, Phantomaniacs, welcome to the newest unboxing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. It is Monster Monday, and today we are looking at the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universal Monsters mashup, Leonardo as the Hunchback. Big, giant box on this guy. Uh, you have the other monsters illustrated on the side. Uh, I did actually also find April as the Bride when I found this figure in Target, but I ordered one from NECA, and what I really should have done, now that I'm thinking about it, is bought one that the paint was good on in the store and hung onto it just in case, uh, but I didn't do that. So maybe I'll have the opportunity to again, or maybe the one NECA ships me whenever they get around to it. Uh, we'll have a great paint job. Uh, apparently... Michelangelo as the Mummy is also popping up now, so I'm looking forward to getting my hands on that one. And then down here at the bottom, you can see we've got Master Splinter as Van Helsing. And then, don't know what Donatello is going to be. I don't think that's been revealed yet. And I'm trying to figure out what is going on there. I'm sure you shrewd viewers will be able to tell me in the comments exactly what's happening uh, with this very interesting head shape uh, but anyway on the back of the box absolutely gorgeous art uh, reminiscent of the old promotional materials for the Universal Monsters pictures and just fantastic product shots they've really uh, plussed these up to look like artwork uh, this line is gorgeous and and if I you know if I had the space if I had the resources or whatever I would be buying one to keep in the box and one to open of all of these. This this line is fantastic. And then, of course, on the bottom of the... Oh, look at this. Interesting. Includes opening shell, brain jar, skull, bone, shovels, katanas, flames, and interchangeable hands. And it is telling you, do not slide the sword into the hand. I See, this kind of stuff, you know, a lot of people will be like, well, they shouldn't be that fragile anyway. Uh, but you know what? Sometimes they just have to be on collector, just collector-oriented toys, and if especially if they're going to do things like this that tell you slide it in through the fingers and then position it once it's past the thumb. This is important, good stuff, and the fact that NECA is doing this, I think, is absolutely fantastic. And then, of course, the credits on the side of the box, which are so critically important to these pieces of art coming into our hands and our shelves. Uh, it's got a nice window box packaging with a little pick of the figure over there. And then the figure itself, big, massive, awesome, weird I, I wasn't going to collect this line. If you watched my review of uh, the first one uh, of Raphael as Frankenstein, then you know I loved these, but I just didn't feel like it was... As much as I collect horror, as much as I collect Ninja Turtles, it was just like, my gosh, I can't, I can't catch them all. But this is actually the figure that made me realize that, as happened so often, my resolve was going to be weakened and I was going to have to collect these. Uh, and I'll show you why once we get to the figure itself. Uh, so we've got a nice backdrop piece inside with some great lab artwork. Or actually, this is the diorama, I believe, that they used to promote the figure. So that's a cool little backdrop. I like that. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Tons and tons of stuff in this box. And that's the other thing is these are, you know, these are standard NECA Ultimate prices, but, but are really feeling like massive deluxe figures to me. Do we have any... Oh, we've got these stupid little tabs. So let's cut these things. I would rather have just normal twist ties than these tabs. Uh, on the wrists as well. I wonder if I would I would, I would imagine these are more cost effective. 
because they're just little pieces of plastic rather than, you know, having wire in them. Uh, but I wonder if they're also maybe a bit more secure since they punch in and hold the figure. And also, I have yet to have an issue with them leaving, uh, like, a mark on a figure or anything, which is a good thing. All right, let's get your little hands and pull you out of there. Oh, wait. Oh, there is. There's one big one around his waist, too. I should have known that. Oh, my gosh. This one is snug. There we go. All right, now he just pops right out. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. Woo. What else? We've got his katana. Are rigid plastic, not rubber at all, not even soft plastic, uh, which is certainly why you don't want to slide those into his hands. We've got a brain in a jar, although so much more than that. We'll take a look at all of those pieces soon. First, we're going to take a look at the figure itself. Uh, the portrait is incredible. Look at the, the eyes, the way that those eyes are positioned. The teeth, the stitches here, uh, all the little moles and everything. And look at the texture of his skin up here on the top. Fantastic. Uh, articulation wise, let's see what we've got here. Uh, I have a feeling the shoulders are not going to be the most mobile because of the placement of this shell. We've got double jointed elbows under those elbow pads. Work pretty nicely. I'm going to push that a little bit and see what we get. You can see the hinge right uh, down here. Uh, and then of course the wrists, you have the swivel there we go and that cuff that little cuff is actually a separate piece there and you can see underneath it uh, the detail all the stitching and grotesqueness that maybe is a little little unnecessary on the hunchback but is a fantastic detail for this monster ninja turtle line uh, so that shoulder the shoulders may have there we go. So they've got a pretty decent range there, yeah, even though that giant shell is right there. You can do pretty much what you want. I mean, he is a hunchback after all. So there's there are going to be limits to how much you can pose him. And if you notice, his shoulders are uh, askew there, the left one riding higher than the right, adding to his uh, unique appearance. Uh, his tunic looks absolutely fantastic the texture on this if you can see and actually look at the shell uh the head oh the head has a decent amount of range as well uh on a big giant ball joint i'm sure but you can see his shell sticking out from under the tunic here the sculpt and the paint on that looks great and then the tunic itself with all of that texture sculpted in there great painted detail and it looks like, yeah, that cuff, so you can move those cuffs down uh, to sort of cover the wrist joints a little bit if you want. Uh, the hands, these are pretty rubbery, pretty soft plastic, which is a good thing. Uh, he's got the rope, he's got a little bug, which is such a nice callback to the old Turtles line. If you remember, so many of... The characters had like little bugs just randomly crawling around on them. So I love to see this because it looks exactly like one of those old bugs that would be sculpted on the old Turtles figures. Uh, he's got a couple on the knee pads over here as well. Uh, and I personally like the knee pads and the elbow pads being on top of the monster clothing because it really does make this feel like, as much as this is so far above and beyond the original monster turtles uh it does feel like this is in the lineage of those original playmates figures so i like that they kept that uh and of course the detail on them is incredible uh trousers again lots of texture the stitching on here 
The torn legs look fantastic. And I'm wondering what kind of joint we've got. We've got double joints on the knees, it looks like. I'm trying to kind of push the elbow, or the elbow, the knee pad out of the way to kind of tell what's going on. Uh, you're not going to get a ton of motion because of that being there. But it seems like this is fixed somewhere on that middle knee joint. With a little work, you might be able to get a little more out of it, but I don't need a, a ton of range there. And then, of course, these are kind of the standard uh, hip joints here. A little restricted, but again, because of the nature of the character, uh, you know, as I like to say, this isn't Spider-Man. Uh, we don't need all of the articulation to be as functional as it can possibly be because this is, you know, this is the hunchback. He does a lot of standing around and grunting, not necessarily a lot of ninja flips. Uh, the ankle is your standard modern ankle. Uh, this, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous figure. Uh, the shell, so this is where this figure got me and made me realize, oh no, I think I'm going to have to buy this line. So you can take a look. The shell looks fantastic. Again, all the textures and the paint and everything. I like these bolted on pieces kind of holding it. You can see where it's cracked and these are actually holding it together. Uh, or that's the intent. Well, then we've got this lock here that I'm going to have to figure out. Oh, wait. Okay, so the lock doesn't actually... I was thinking the lock would actually come off uh, and the shell would open up. But the shell opens up. Oh, with a horrible little spider inside. I hate that. Ugh. Uh, the shell opens up, and what we have here is essentially a nod to the old storage shell turtles, which were my favorite of the old Ninja Turtles figures, like of the turtles themselves, uh, because I loved the fact that you could put all those extra weapons that they always came with inside their shells. So essentially, this is a combo monster turtle and storage shell turtle uh, i recommend you be pretty careful opening it up that hinge uh you know it's relatively sturdy but at the same time uh use care and if you can see where his belt is right here it actually kind of touches the sculpt when you close it so i would pull just a bit so you're not just forcing past that belt piece and then close it right back up uh but the interior of that shell, you can see all the divots and everything in here, but he's got literally shelves to put the accessories that are included with the figure uh, in there, in his storage shell. This is genius on another level. And all of these were designed, I believe all of these were designed by James Groman, uh, who worked on Mad Balls, My Pet Monster... Uh, many of the gross-out toys of uh, the 80s. Let's see, where are our credits? Uh, yeah, direction, design, and development. Randy Falk, Trevor Zammett, and James Groman. So, a lot of the brilliance that we're seeing in this figure, and the bulk, I believe, uh, comes from James Groman's uh, sensibilities. So... This guy stands up really nicely, no problem at all. You just have to get his ankles uh, doing the right thing. So let's take a look at the accessories that were included with our hunchback. Uh, we already mentioned his katana. They appear to be identical, which is fine. They should be. Um, but they are a very different kind of katana from what we're used to seeing. The paint, of course, just, just because of the process of manufacturing, very slight variances uh, on the hilts. But I love, let's just set that aside for now. Uh, I love this spiked ball, which is actually quite sharp on the end. And this iron-looking guard piece here with the bolts in it. Uh, so they are Leo's Katana, but definitely done in this Universal Monsters style aesthetic. There is the brain in the jar that we mentioned before. 
but it's not just a beautifully sculpted piece. That brain, does it come off of there? No, the brain does not come off of there. But if you so desire, you could put some liquid in here uh, to have that brain suspended. But just look at all of the paint and the detail on this. Uh, those little dials look fantastic. Th this is a beautiful piece. And as you can see, it's got a little peg right here in the bottom, or a hole right here in the bottom. So I'm going to take that, open up that shell, and I believe that sits right there. Fantastic. Set him back off to the side. We've got a human skull. Very nicely detailed and painted. Looks great. Nothing, nothing too special about it, but just a nice little skull. Uh, this has a hole in the bottom, so your skull, I am guessing... Oh wait, maybe it doesn't go up here. Because this is a square peg. So the skull could go there, I guess. We're going to set this to the side for now until we can figure out exactly. Because that, yeah, that certainly isn't going to sit up there. I guess if you wanted to... Oh no, because that peg is too large. So this definitely is the piece that goes here, which makes sense because it fits here perfectly. And then the skull might be something that just kind of sits off to the side, uh, which is what we're going to do with it right now because we have a whole other tray of accessories to look at. Uh, no tape, just a nice plastic piece holding everything in place that we are now going to dump out. And there is a shovel. Great looking, just dirty. Awesome accessory. And then a spade. I guess that's, no, that's bigger than a spade. So that's just a, he, he just has smaller shovels. Uh, but also looks great. A bone, just nice random bone sitting in there. I like this crack sculpted in the middle. Not particularly realistic looking, and I like that. It's exaggerated. It looks like a, a prop from a horror movie. Uh, and then got a couple of flames that appear to be... Yeah, each one is a unique sculpt. These are not just two of the same flame. So that's great. And these, I believe... Slide onto the katana because at some point the hunchback here is going to have to take on Frankenstein. He's got a cool flaming effect. Once Frankenstein goes berserk, he's going to need these flaming katana. Uh, and then a variety of hands. Uh, we have got a pointing hand. Let me get that out of the way. Hang on. Oh, come on. There we go. A pointing hand. A closed fist. The katana wielding hand. And then matching counterparts. Well, so now I'm curious, because that's not a square hole on that skull. Oh, that's not a square peg, though. It is... Maybe that does go on there. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to take some doing. It's going to be easier to do when I'm not trying to film a video, but that skull does go on that little peg so you've got those two pieces I kind of wish I do wish the uh, shovels would fit in there it seems like they should 
Let's take a look at the box again and see what all is in there. No, it's just the... Oh, wow! Holy cow, you guys. Okay, so everything does go in there. That is wild. Even the bone. Let's get to it. I want to see this happen. So, we have to take the flames off of the katana. And now, we've got... And that's what all these little divots are, I guess. So we get the one shovel, or, or not. Oh, but there's a little ridge. How clever is that? There's a little ridge right here to hold these pieces in place. So you get one shovel there, the other shovel. Okay, they don't fit in here necessarily like super duper neatly. And then the bone. And we'll do... You know what? It's going to be easier to just put the katana in first. So, let's do that one. Well, I say it is. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that one goes in there. Oh, it's going to be hard to line those up. Okay, easy enough, easy enough. So that one goes in that way. And then that one goes in that way. Don't put you don't have to push them in all the way because then the blades will actually bend just a little bit. Just slide them in until they kind of stop sliding. And then we can get well maybe those are those on top? I thought they were behind the katana. Yeah, they are. But see now they're not gonna fit in. What a process, you guys. What a process. I'm going to make this happen, though. Now I'm, like, determined that this has to happen. Oh, wait, there is a divot, though. So the top of the shovel should go right into there. And then this one should go right there. Because you can see where those little divots are, and then the top of the bone goes in right there. And then we'll get our blades. Like, it's sort of a little complicated, but not really. You just have to put it, it's like a little puzzle. You have to put it in the way it's meant to go in. There's no room for... Uh, anything being slightly off. That one goes in there. Oh my gosh, seriously? Okay, now everything is secured uh, sort of where it's supposed to be. We're going to button that shell back up, and look at that. There he is. You could probably jam the hands in there as well if you really wanted to. Uh, beautiful, incredible action figure. I am thrilled with this line. I'm excited to get the rest of the figures in it. Uh, and what a, uh, what a great kind of preamble to the Halloween season to start with this guy. More spooky toy reviews will be coming between now and Halloween, so stay tuned. Uh, they're not all going to be spooky uh, yet. But for now, this is a good start. Thanks for watching, you guys. Please like, subscribe, share, tell your friends about needless things, and uh, keep it spooky. Smash that like button if you like needless things.